Hi. <laughs> we are live. We're actually live now. Definitely live. <laughs> Definitely live. 100% yep. live. <laughs> One day I'll actually get really good at this. Anyway, so um, first off, uh, hello everybody and welcome to episode five. I can't believe we're on episode five already, by the way. That's gone mm. really quick. Um, as you can see, we've got two amazing new guests with us this evening. Uh, so... Girls, do you want to introduce yourselves or introduce each other? Who are you? Uh, and yeah, tell us something about yourselves. Um, hi, I'm Izzy. I am 20. Um, played hockey since I was five. And an interesting fact, well, I did say before that I do love dogs more than humans. So yeah, I'd have to do that. I love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm Lizzie. Uh, I'm 22. Uh, I'm currently a student at Loughborough University studying sports management. And I've been in the GB Centralised programme for two years now. So, yeah. Uh, and if I had to say an interesting fact, it's I've lived in four different countries before I was five. So, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> wow. Probably mention Izzy is also in the GB squad and also goes to Loughborough. Yeah, is he's both She hasn't just played hockey since she was five. She's, yeah. she's actually quite good at it as well. Yeah. And they're both my housemates. So <laughs> we're downstairs. Um, yeah, so tonight we are, yeah, we're going to get to know you guys a little bit better um, for everybody in Sport 101. Uh, we're also going to test, so Gibbo and I are going to put you three housemates to the test uh with your hockey knowledge um and yeah find out a little bit more about what's going on in the world um firstly give and tess how are you guys doing how's your week been <laughs> yeah week has been has been really good um i've been injured for a little while and this week i've been ramping up my running did a bit of change of direction today so um hopefully i'll be back playing on the pitch next week is what they said so um has really brightened my day that new so yeah pretty pretty good excellent Gibbo? yeah work from home type stuff so uh a lot of stuff on those two platforms teams and zoom that we're all using a lot at the moment but no quite good um just catching up with some love for stuff so I spoke to, to brett a lot this week um on the pitch tomorrow under the elite dispensation rules which is cool i get to work with some of our 21s players and we've got a scottish and irish player who qualify for elite dispensation as well so yeah I get pending to do... coronavirus test though oh yeah pending <laughs> test <I> think <laughs> think coronavirus test touch wood negative and then you can do four one-to-ones what on the... time's your test tomorrow because i bet it's not as early as our tests 10 so i'm um, on the pitch from 11 i test at 10 we um we're going into isolation tomorrow for the weekend before going away to Spain and our tests are at seven ten Good luck. in the morning. <laughs> Good night, uh, Lee. Um yeah. before we dive into questions, Francois is loving the love for rate ratio. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Three to two. Yeah. Francois is loving it. <laughs> There's Loughborough and Canterbury represented on this course. He must be in Greenland. Yeah. Um, so, first off, in terms of like Lizzie and Izzy, oh, that's not going to be difficult to say all night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, like, how's it been being back at training? Like, how, like, being back on the turf, obviously, with all the girls, like, back with the squad. How's it been? Um, what's been kind of your highlight being back on the turf? Um, I would say firstly just seeing all the girls again it was really exciting to get back after Christmas we had a nice break uh, we had about four weeks of doing running from home um, and just getting back in that social environment and seeing them playing with them just yeah 
it makes our weeks really. So yeah, no, I really we really enjoyed getting back on the pitch. Yeah, mm. after not playing for like five weeks, like I'm not joking. So on Wednesday morning, I could not move because like you do all this running, and obviously it's all like upright, and then you go and come to hockey, and it's like squatting and everything. And then everyone on Wednesday on the group chat was like, "Can anyone else like not move?" But, um, this week's been really fun. Actually, we've done loads of like skill based stuff, um, so it hasn't been like too intense to sort of a gradual like return. Um, so it's been a lot of fun, especially not just running on your own. It's nice to do some team stuff as well. I do find it funny when you come back after a period of being away and then you have to socialise again with not just your family or close people that you talk to every day. And I would say one of the things I always struggle with is actually getting back and talking to a big group of people. Um, it's interesting from a social point of view. Yeah, that's huge. I bet the players up and down the country who are relieved to hear you say that about how much it hurts coming back even for a senior athlete as well. Oh my God. Like nothing hurts like playing hockey because that's like a classic pre-season thing. I've done loads of running, but God, I'm sore after the first, like that sort of first week back pre-season, every player up and down the country says it. Mm -hmm. I've done loads of running, I'm meant to be fit, in the, but I'm, I can't move the next day. Different beast in hockey. Nothing hurts like hockey, does it? I can't really replicate it. <laughs> Um, and so, like, how many like sessions and stuff have you done this week? Like, what's it? What's been your schedule coming back into it? Um, so Monday. So actually, we had fitness testing last week, which was not very fun, obviously, but it has to be done. So we did RSA, which is repeat sprints on Friday and some jumps, and then third fifteen on Saturday. So got that out of the way, and then Monday we did pitch and gym. Um, then Tuesdays, pitch, um, Thursday, pitch, gym, pitch. But the first pitch was like uh, um, penalty corners and PCD sort of stuff. And then we didn't actually train today because they said it would be frozen, but it wasn't frozen. So we had to run instead. But we're training on Monday um, instead. So it's been pretty busy. Our yeah. schedule's a bit different to normal because normally we wouldn't train on the weekends. Um, but at the moment, just because of coming back and wanting to get as much pitch time as possible we we forfeited our weekend and yeah had snc and yeah hockey on the weekend so it's quite nice to break up the weekend a bit yeah i imagine um i think i think and this kind of is a question to all three of you is there anybody that's um like been like the super most excited kid back at school in the squad is the only way you're thinking actually they are the one that's been like <laughs> uber keen to be back like I don't think that's going to be tough. ready to go <laughs> I would, I would actually. Say, I mean, they might say me, but I would say that Towner has been yeah, I would think, yeah. <laughs> needing a lot of um, attention. Probably is the best word <laughs> to say. <laughs> she um it was so sweet she put on the group can't wait to see you all on the mon on monday morning and no one replied well i said to her i would have replied but i just didn't see the message and then we were already at training and i thought it's a bit weird if i reply whilst i'm <laughs> there so <laughs> Yeah, bless her. She's been living on her own, I think, a bit. So I think she's just excited for some social interaction, bless her. Um, but yeah, definitely Pauna, I'd say. Yeah. Make sure you reply to the next message. That's rough, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really rough. Um, and then is there anybody that, like, you've seen a difference? So they've kind of, like, come back and be like, oh, my God, they're, like, way better than, you know, that haven't had the time out? um the only person i'd say is like uh jizz has just come back from injury and so we haven't seen her play in a long time and it's that difference when she's on the pitch to when she's not she's got this massive aerial and we're all like wow like, incredible when she comes back and so i'd probably say giselle because she came back this week so exciting to have her back and um yeah to see her try she gave um shazza a like five six one-on-ones with the keeper because she was tracking the aerials over everyone oh amazing yeah it was great yeah because she's been out for a while hasn't she mm. yeah. long time yeah, yeah she had an ankle injury didn't she yeah mm. oh, amazing. Um, but she's been like gymming so much so she actually hits the ball like a train oh, now it's oh, terrifying yeah. <laughs> pressing her i literally 
to it again because she absolutely talks it. <laughs> Terrifying. You've got your glove on, I'm sure, is he? Sorry? Okay, I'm sure you've got your glove on and you're yeah. nice and low. I'm not sure my glove would actually... No, gloves don't work. Don't, I'm, here to, I'm here to say gloves do not work. <laughs> need to get a bigger glove. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, those those gloves work. Those gloves work. Um, and then kind of looking into next week, then it must be so exciting to be getting ready to go out next week to you know actually play some games, train. Like, how's what's the feeling kind of in the mood in the camp and stuff? Getting ready for that. Oh, okay. Um, I'd say that a lot of people are excited. Um, like we're very privileged to be able to be going. Um, so I think everyone's really excited to get out and play some games. Um, and to be able to play games is like amazing, especially when we're up to the Olympics. Like we need to be playing uh, games against like good opposition. Um, and yeah, I just, it's really lucky we're able to go, but I think everyone's quite excited. Yeah, I, I feel the same. I'm so excited. At the beginning, I was a bit like, oh my gosh, are we really going in a national lockdown? Like, But we're elite athletes at the end of the day and we're going to have to perform at the Olympic Games. So looking at it from that perspective, I'm now looking at it so excited. Can't wait to go. And it's just great to be together for such a long period of time with the squad all together and um, yeah, away together, which is really nice. Yeah. I guess from my point of view, like it must be a really, it must feel different being back now with so many people not being able to get on a turf. It, it, how does it feel for, and this is to kind of all three of you guys, like having that elite dispensation, does it feel different being able to train knowing that some of your closest mates who play aren't able to? Like what's the, what's the feeling in the group around that? There's a big sense of like gratitude to the government for allowing the the elite dispensation to to happen, and I think it comes with a big sense of responsibility, and that that's something that I think the squad's taken on really well in terms of all of the different COVID protocols we have, and like adhering to those and being so careful around our training habits and things like that. Um, and it does make it even more special when you're on the pitch. Like we were saying last week, the three of us, that um, it's almost like being injured when you can't play hockey, like in a national lockdown. And so we're lucky enough to be able to do that. So it's, it's yeah, it's a great feeling. Anything? Oh, sorry, Lizzie, were you going to say something then? No, I was just going to say it does feel strange sometimes when you're allowed to go to the supermarket but not allowed to go anywhere else and then suddenly get what well, you're going to training and that's the two places you go so i do feel it feels strange at the same time being able to play um so yeah it, it's a big responsibility to stick to those guidelines that we have in place but uh, yeah and enjoy it when we can <laughs> yeah definitely and gibbo like you said you're coaching tomorrow like what's the feeling being a coach being able to deliver it with elite dispensation um it's not yeah like you said around gratitude you sort of you don't want to be like I, I actually thought twice about saying it because i know that'll make a lot of coaches oh, i wish i could do that because it's when you're not able to do it it's it's pretty pretty crap but uh yeah massively gra grateful to be able to get it's going to be four hours on the pitch tomorrow which is great with with four players who i know really well and it's going to be great to work with them and they're you know really they're really excited as well. So it's kind of like just doing a small version of the job you want to do, but mm. it's a hundred percent better than not doing anything. So completely know where you guys are coming from, where you kind of feel like you're in the lucky few, and I feel like I'm in the lucky few when I to do a day. So yeah, definitely grateful. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Kibo, have you got anything else you want to ask, kind of training wise, before we get on to putting these three to the test? Is there anything you want to? Anything well, else I was going to ask, like, from a development point of view to all three of you, do you feel like this has still been a year where you've got better? Really difficult, probably, but still feel like it's a year you've found ways to improve because it's been challenging. There's been lots of things thrown your way as professional athletes. You still feel like there's been a for you to get better this year? Um, yeah, I, I think so. It's, I, for me, like, personally, I felt the first lockdown came at quite a good time because 
I felt the pressure of Olympic year was like massive because obviously I'd never experienced it before like these guys but when you've had a sort of a practice run I think mm-hmm. this year will will be like easier to like manage um but definitely I feel like I've had the opportunity to like develop and like because like, I've struggled with confidence a bit and I feel like the lockdowns helped me to like work on that more um so that's been good for me yeah that's sort of how I felt as well like the freedom and the excitement to get back I found myself doing things um experimenting more than I had done previously a bit like is with the pressure of trying to um perform at a certain level you can forget why you got there in the first place which is sort of like your innate ability and your own creativity and so I when I came back from yeah the first lockdown I felt a bit freer um so things like I don't know, just doing more cross pitch aerials or or um, trying to shoot to the top corner because you can, rather than like trying to to you know just kind of like going for it a bit more. Yeah, for me it was a bit different. I felt from a running perspective and gym perspective, I was able to just like um, really benefit from the time to focus on the different areas uh and i'd say i like i thrived at home training uh down my road just getting out in the mornings doing what i could and i think it was a very different type of training and development but uh i would say i definitely came back fitter as a result of the stuff i could do at home Uh, that's great so there's still been opportunities for even like the best in the country like you guys so that should be nice for here for young and club players developing i guess from that physical perspective obviously it's people talk about the difference between kind of edp 21s and then seniors and the physical requirements so actually maybe to have that little extra time to to develop that must have been really useful yeah it was definitely helpful i created a little gym in my house using any bit of equipment um we could get our hands on um and it was very basic but it enabled me to just yeah work on different skills that i hadn't necessarily worked on before um so yeah definitely it was a good amount of time to do that oh nice right here we go which housemate knows the most? So, <laughs> Lizzie is not excited about this. I hope we've not got the same questions wrote down to ask Mike because we've not checked in with each other. But that's well, that's the fun of live TV, I suppose. That is the fun of live TV. Yeah. Um, Gibbo, you can go first, mate. Sorry. Okay, I've got one that I'm going to say for the end because I'm just getting my facts checked. So that's a little challenge for Izzy and Lizzie uh, by someone who does know. Right. Here we um, go. So, okay, little bit of GB knowledge. Oh no! <laughs> well, actually, we'll go England first. England men and women have both won the European Championships. When was the last time they both did it? What was the year for the men? The year for the women? Women, twenty fifteen. Yeah. Men. <laughs> oh, I don't have a clue. Um, let's go. Two thousand and seven. I'm gonna go 2006. Every you got to work logically. Well, go on, yeah. yeah earlier. Wait, would it be yeah. right? so every two years? What was that? when? 2010. <laughs> you were close. Well, there we go. It was 2009. Oh, you know, forget how young you are. Be are. An odd year. Down to 20. Yeah, you'd have been. Very young then. I was 19 then, so God knows what you were. Um, So here's one. And Tess, feel free to answer this by all means. Um, How many times have Loughborough won the overall book standings? And that's all sports. Oh, my God. (laughs) How many years in a row? Durham won it. Durham won it like two years ago. Did they? They They definitely won it two years ago. I'm thinking of hockey, sorry. In my first year. Overall, all sports. How 30 some, no maybe too many <laughs> in bucks okay yeah, or is, is that including that booster it's called booster as well okay or including more. i'm so gonna I'll say nine okay nine 
Um, I'm going to go 30. I really don't. Sorry. Good. I no. said 54. 54. <laughs> uh, working out who's won. Izzy's won. It's actually 40. Oh, yeah, 40. It hasn't been in university for that long, has it? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> you need to do no, I'm serious. Where you it, get the, it must all, have been. When it was just a few sheds and a running track. That's what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been going for a while. <laughs> it's not been in university that long, says the Durham grad. Francois even chirped. Ch Thomas says 41. Well, if we're counting last year, Connor, that I think that's probably correct but tw as of 2019 yeah i didn't know where to count last year with the lockdowns but we, we were in the lead before there were the summer sports as well so technically could be 41 oh. but I, I wanted to you know be humble <laughs> um, all right this is a tough one and i'm still getting my facts checked on this last one so i might let mike go first um barry middleton alex danson who scored more combined england and gb goals Barry Do you want to give a guess on a figure for both of them? Um, oh, I think she got like two. Uh, Combined, Alex, 100. Because she, she scored her 100th at the World Cup, I thought. 100th? Yeah, I think 100. <laughs> Barry Middleton, I'm going to say 120. Mm. How long did Barry play? He played for so long. I'm going to say Barry Middleton. Maybe she scored her 200. I feel like girls. Alex. I'm going to say Alex. <laughs> I feel like Alex right. scored 200. Was it 200? No, I thought it was 200. I can't remember. Um, I can't. Caps. Um, I'm going to go with Alex. Yeah. Alex is 100. close. And we've had one guess that is almost bullseye. So, mm -hmm. Barry, 119. It's a test. <gasps> Oh my, oh my god, god. Please. and Alex 115 I've got down. Oh that's close. <laughs> Very close. But the actually I mean Barry was quite a prolific scorer, but Alex's record is in 306 combined games and Barry's is in 432. Wow. Wow. Pretty two very impressive records. Yeah. Matches. Wow. So good. Mike, do you wanna go so first? And I've got I'm just prepping this the last bit to this question because it could be quite funny. But I'm just making sure I get it right. So I do, and then you do that one. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Maddie, Lil, and Jizz, who has more caps? Put them in order. Okay. That order. Uh, well, which one? Who, in order of who has the most caps out of Maddie, Lil, and Giselle? Who's got more caps? Oh, okay. Should we reveal it like this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not your, showing them. On your phone like that. <laughs> Who is the weakest link? Goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay. We've really done. We've done I opposites. Feel like they're I feel yeah. like they were in the same. Sorry, this is combined, correct? Yeah. Uh, combined. Yeah. Okay, nice. Combined. Reveal. Reveal. Oh, you can't really see. Yeah. So you've gone Lily, Maddie, Jizz. <laughs> Jizz, Maddie, Lil. Maddie, <laughs> Lil, Jizz. The answer is Giselle, Giselle, oh, yeah. Giselle, Giselle, Lily, and then Maddie. Oh, I got oh, really? You got Giselle right. What did you oh, say? You got it completely wrong. Yeah, same. I thought, so Maddie has the least out of all of them. Out of those three, oh. yeah. That's interesting. I did not know that. I thought because Lily's missed two tournaments. Mm. But I guess Maddie also missed two tournaments. Wait, so Lily and Giselle are in the same time? So uh, Giselle has 156. Uh, Lily has 155. Oh, oh wow. wow. And Maddie has 149. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's exactly really, really close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Really close. Um, and then my next one, who has more goals, Towner or Holly? Oh, oh, this is a good question. I think Towner's on nine goals. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's on, 
or seven, seven or nine. I know, but I'm just wondering. No, Towner, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying Towner. I'm going to say Towner now because if she's on that, I'm peer pressure. No, Holly has. <laughs> no. no. So what are we I saying? Can't, Tal- I can't remember Holly scoring. Scoring. I remember scoring at the Commonwealth. That's it. Is Holly ever taking no. strokes now? No. No. So Holly has scored eight. Oh, and oh, here we go. And Towner. Eleven. 11. Oh! Badger. Badger. Yeah, Badger. Badger. Her, her number is nine. That's why I thought nine to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Un- Unzi's the next one with 11 as well. So Unzi and Tal. 11. 11. So a little bit of trivia knowledge for you there. Uh, Gibbo, are you ready with your final? Yeah. Um, 90% ready, but I'll do it anyway. So Lizzie. Mm-hmm. How many Loughborough games and goals has Izzy played and scored? Oh, <laughs> good luck. Games in the season. I know I'm how many watching, games. Get in on this as well. <laughs> goals. Um, I want to say five goals and. Not that many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I struggled. Um, <laughs> struggled last season. And then, how many games in a season? No, and nine, how many? Nine teams. So I want to say you didn't play them all, but you played this season too. I'm going to say eleven games. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, okay. total. Oh, you play everyone twice, don't you? <laughs> It's amazing how those leagues work. Brilliant. You <laughs> then. Okay. Four goals. Yeah, and yeah. 22. In 19 games. Oh, oh, okay. I wasn't too far off. So this is the, the figure that's going to get debated. I know your games, Lizzie, but you predate me at Loughborough. So having to second check just Brett's oh. doing some SWAT now on your goals. Oh, my God. How many games for Lizzie and how many goals in her she scored at Bucks final, I remember that. <laughs> How many years? When did she in league because Izzy's not played Bucks for yet? So just leave. I think you scored six goals, Lizzie. Oh my gosh, I have absolutely no idea. Like maybe sixty. Would you how I don't know how many games are in Bucks either because I haven't played. Not counting Bucks, just league. Uh let's go eleven nineteen. Let's go. 15, 30, 45. Lizzie, do you know your goals? No. <laughs> I guess she's not, she's not obsessive like us. <laughs> that is something I would 100% want to know. <laughs> mm. I say six, six goals, 70 games. Very close, 65 games. And I'm getting confirmation oh, from Brett. So so close. I actually think six is in the ballpark because it's none this year, two last year, one the year before, mm. and the year before I was there. You played North Conference. I reckon you could have easily scored a couple that year. So you could be banging the right ballpark. So we'll get confirmation from Brett. I thought I was thinking five or six, but 65. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. That's a lot of games. A lot of games. games. Wow. I'm surprised. So who, so just thinking then, who's got the best knowledge then? I think it's kind of, who do you reckon has been the closest (laughs) so far, knowledge wise? Um, it's very tricky that so <laughs> I would say Lizzie has slightly more like bat hockey badger tendencies <laughs> like, badger yeah I think so like not test level but <laughs> but like really like I reckon maybe just but that could be like the extra two years on the planet that helps because Lizzie's that little bit extra two years on the planet <laughs> and yeah, it's a bit more worldly wise maybe I don't know. I think it's, I'd peg them pretty even, but yeah, it's a, it's a, a ball draw. <laughs> ball draw. I get that. Um, and on that, I think we will finish there. Um, Lizzie and Izzy, thank you so much for being on. It's been a real laugh. Um, and yeah, really good luck to all three of you guys for uh, your training camp and everything else. Um, yeah, we'll certainly be hoping that you guys make some real gains and get some good games in it whilst you're over there. Um, Gibbo and Tess, anything from you guys? 
Well, what are we doing next week, Mike? Oh, I'll let you lead on that one, mate, actually. Yeah, cool. So next week, um, these guys, you'll be in Spain, right? Yeah. So we're hoping Tess has a slot to join us. You're more than welcome as well. Uh, but we have a sports psychologist join us called Neil Roach. He's someone that I know pretty well. I've done a project with him before and heard him speak a few times. And he's just a really, just a great bloke to talk to about people, what things and coaches and athletes might be going through at the moment. So stuff around resuming training after a long period off and how you approach that. Some stuff around performance anxiety, some stuff around just supporting athletes and coaches in this difficult period. So we're lucky to have him on the show for the full the full slot next week, the full hour. Um, and if anyone has any questions, submit them to Mike. Comment on this video, I think. They're going to go on YouTube. So just put them in the comments. We'll see them and we'll make sure that we... Uh, fax them into the show but yeah really looking forward to having him next week amazing so excited for that uh tess anything for you before we finish up no just go check out free solo hockey, free solo hockey as usual Definitely. and uh, i don't think i've mentioned east grinstead yet so there you go the weekly <laughs> grinstead, loving, <laughs> weekly You're very lucky heavy this week i'll let you off <laughs> so um well girls and Gibbo, thank you so much um, for tonight. And yeah, look forward to seeing you all next week. And yeah, good luck for your training next week. See you later, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.